So we'll go briefly into how to collect tissue samples for nutrient analysis. So why do we sample tissue? Typically when we're talking about tissue, we're talking about leaves. Um, this is going to depend on what your crop is. So this is a very general talk, but it's really important to know that it really depends on your specific crop species. So generally we, we sample tissues in order to monitor our nutrient levels in our actual crop. So Marisol is talking about soils, and while it's really important to know what your nutrient status is in your soils, it's even more important to correlate that with your tissue samples so you can see what your plant is actually utilizing. You may have a lot of a certain nutrient available in your soil, but your plant isn't able to access it for certain reasons. Um, so we typically do this to monitor our crops um, and to better fertilize our crops and provide nutrients that are going to be um, in a sustainable way so we're not over applying or under applying certain nutrients. So this is an example of a crop log that we use for macadamia nut, for example. And it's just to give you an idea of how we would chart what our percent, let's say, nitrogen in this case. And then on the bottom, we can actually chart what fertilizer we're putting in. And by monitoring on a regular basis, you can actually see how your nutrient levels are reacting to your fertilizer. So the question that someone asked was, when do we take the soil samples? Um, if you take it before you apply your fertilizer, and then you take a tissue sample afterwards, you can kind of see how your plant is actually reacting to those inputs. So it's really important to monitor on a regular basis for your crops. So how do we collect tissue samples? The first thing is, again, know your crop. What is the crop species that you're interested or you're working with or that you have on your farm? And that's going to determine how many samples you take, um, which part of the plant you're actually sampling from. So in this presentation, I'll use macadamia nut as an example. Um, so in macadamia, for example, we usually collect 15 leaves um, as a representative sample. And we collect it from, the, from a mature branch with a newly matured leaf. So I'll show you that in the next slide. So just like with your soil samples, you want to take a representative sample. This can mean two things. A representative sample can mean if you have an orchard and you're just generally monitoring for your fertilizer regime, you would take it from trees that are of the same age, the same variety, and of the same health, so that you're just getting a general recommendation for your area. This also depends on the size of your farm. If you only have one acre, you really only need one sample. If you have 50 acres and half your farm is on a slope, you may want to split up your farm depending on those uh, different factors. Or let's say you have two varieties, or you have a planting that's 15 years old and you have a planting that's 30 years old. You want to take samples that represent those trees so that you're not over or under fertilizing your whole field. Because um, essentially you'd be wasting your fertilizer if you don't do that. So the other representative sample we can get is for diagnostics. So let's say that you have a specific area of your field that's looking really bad. Um, it's, not from it's not from irrigation, it's not from drought, it's not from a pest or insect or other disease problem. You would want to take tissue from those trees so that you could get an idea of if there's a nutrient deficiency in those trees. So rather than taking it from your whole field, you would just take it from that area as a diagnostic sample for nutrient deficiencies. So those are the two types of representative samples that we would do. So now these are the two most important factors, is sampling and sample preparation. This is where you can go wrong. Um, and if you do these steps incorrectly, it can again lead to results that are going to be inaccurate. And typically, you'll either apply too much or too little of a fertilizer based on those results. So making sure that you're using correct sampling methodology and correct sample preparation and uh, submission are really critical in being sure that you're getting accurate results. Otherwise, you're just throwing money away and time. So again, for sampling, representative. Make sure that you're taking a representative sample, that you're not taking it from deficient leaves and then healthy leaves and mixing those samples together because you'll get a very mixed result. So generally, when we talk about tissue samples, we're taking the youngest fully matured leaf. Again, this is very dependent on the crop. So I'm not going to go into specifics because this is, again, you have to really know what crop you're working with. And I'll give you some resources to figure out uh, which crop you're working with and which leaves you're supposed to be sampling. For macadamia nut, it's a little bit complicated. You need to have a mature branch that is at a resting state. So up here we have the bud that is not flushing. That means it's not just putting out new growth. For example, you can see here that this leaf tissue, this branch is bright green. And that's an example of a, leaf, of a newly flushing branch that we would not want to sample from these leaves. 
because it would give us a bias reading on our least samples. And then you want to take it from the whirl, the second whirl below that resting point for macadamia. So again, it depends on the crop. Um, so you'll have to just do some more research before you can go ahead and take your samples. And again, the extension agents that uh, if you're a commercial grower, you would contact your extension agent. And if you're a home, home gardener, you would contact master gardeners um, if you can't find the resources you need to figure out which leaf tissue to sample. So some other important things to think about when you're collecting the sample is that you want to make sure you're not collecting leaves that are covered in soil or dust, because again, that'll um, alter your results. You want to make sure that you're not taking from leaves that are damaged in any way, um, because again, this could also change the nutrient status in those leaves, which would give you an altered reading. You also want to make sure you're not taking from dead or dying plants, because obviously they're not healthy and uh, wouldn't be representative. And typically, if they're dead or dying, um, unless you're seeing an associated nutrient deficiency problem, it's likely not due to that. So you wouldn't get an accurate reading for your field. Um, and again, also making sure that when you see a plant, let's say a tree, for example, that looks like it's having nutrient deficiencies, you want to be sure that you can eliminate the factors of temperature or water stress as um, components for why you're seeing the stress in the tree, because you would get an altered reading as well um, for the nutrient status, because it could be for other reasons besides just your fertility. Okay, sample preparation. Just like Marisol said, it's um, important to submit your samples with appropriate labeling, for example. So we want to make sure that you can label it with your name. You can come up with a sample ID. This could be as simple as one, two, three, four. Um, or if you come up with a field map and you've separated out within your field that you have four different samples, you can label them however you'd like that you can correlate back with your field map. A date and a location are just some basic information so that if this sample does get separated from your paperwork, then the ADSC can usually match it back up with your paperwork and still get you your results. So it's just good practice since we are sending our samples to Oahu and um, you know sometimes things get mixed up. So then submit to ADSC, which uh, is our recommendation. Um, the ADSC is the Agricultural Diagnostic Service Center, and as Mirasol kind of touched on this, and I'll just reiterate what she was saying basically. Um, so you can get home kits for doing soil analysis and tissue analysis and that kind of information, but they're usually really general. Um, the ADSC will give you very precise results. Uh, you can also send it to other labs, but we recommend sending it to ADSC because their methodologies are based on tropical systems. And that'll give you a more accurate result for uh, your cropping system here in Hawaii. So this is the ADSC's website. You can go there and um, just give you some general information about what type of tests they offer. So again, you can submit your soil, you can submit your leaf tissue, uh, you can submit pest and disease samples, as Brian's going to cover in the next presentation. Um, so it's a really great service that we offer at the university. The first thing you need to know when you go in to submit your sample is what do you want your results to say. So just like with the soil analysis, it has a similar breakdown just like this, where we offer different tests. Um, so you can pick T1, T2, T3, T4. These are the tissues a little less complicated than soil, but um, typically people select T2 because it's a pretty comprehensive list of macro micronutrients. Um, and then you can also select if you want to know your total nitrate levels um, or if you are in an area that you're worried about metal contamination, we can do soil tests and tissue tests for metals as well. And so basically you just go in and just make sure you know which tests you want ahead of time so that you're not kind of fumbling around when you get in to do your paperwork. Um, and I believe this list is online, the different tests that are available. Okay, Marisol already went over this, where you can you submit it. Again, we send our samples from this center on Tuesdays. Um, so you want to make sure that you get your sample here before then. So depending wherever office you're at, just make sure you get it there, ideally by Monday, Tuesday morning at the very latest, but to guarantee it's going to go out that week. For any tissue sample you submit, you can get all four of these done, or just two of them, or you, know, you can pick and choose. You can also select T1 for all of those elements. Um, and then you just multiply each one that you wanted by seven. It's not that you can only get one T1. You can get four T1s or three T1s. So again, that's why this is really important because in the soil sample, for example, you may get one level of nitrogen or, or let's say carbon. You get one level of carbon. But then when you get to your tissue sample, it may be a different level. So you can see the difference between what's available 
supposedly in the soil, you know, what's actually there and what the plant is actually using. Does that make sense? So it's not going to give you what the total potential is. It's what's actually in that sample that you're submitting. So the soil is total available? In theory, right? But, but all soil elements uh, interact with one another. So even though you have a certain level in your, in your field, it may not actually be available to your plant. There may be other nutrients that are, that are tying it up, and that's why it's not available to your actual plant. So it'll tell you what's in the soil. Um, and again, that's where it's really important to work with your extension agent if you're a commercial grower or the master gardeners because they can help you kind of interpret what those results mean in terms of what's actually going to be available for your plant. And the tissue samples will help with that because let's say you have a lot of phosphorus in your soil sample that's available, but for some reason you're still deficient in phosphorus in your plant. Then that'll help you realize, okay, okay, there's something going on that's tying up the phosphorus from getting into the plant. Uh huh. Okay, the question is if you have, your soil has a lack of a nutrient and your plant has an abundance of it. Hmm, that could be. It, it could be several things. It could also be that you're sampling the wrong tissue because we do see an elevated levels in younger tissue of certain nutrients and that can throw off your readings. That's true. That's true. Yes. If you're doing foliar application, that might be, a, that's a great example. Yeah. So if you're doing foliar fertilization, so yeah. Okay, so the question is how much tissue you need to submit. Again, that's going to depend on your crop. So one type of, one crop may have a different re requirement for number of samples versus another. So it's going to depend on what you're submitting. Mac nuts, it's 15 leaves. Um, it's going to depend, you know, let's say it's papaya. I don't know how many petioles they're supposed to submit for that, but um, it just depends on the crop. But I usually recommend, at least for orchard crops, that you take one soil sample before you fertilize and a tissue sample at the same time, and then that you try to do regular tissue sampling throughout the year, and that depends on what you're able to do. Um, but that'll give you an idea of how things are changing over the season and how the fertilizer is being uptake, uptaken by your plants and utilized. Um, for mac nuts, we recommend trying to take tissue samples at least twice a year, and soil samples once a year. Okay, so we have two forms that you have to fill out when you come into the office. So you can't just come in and drop off your sample and leave. Um, we need information from you in order to submit the samples. The first one on your left um, is basically like an invoice and it'll tell you how much money that you need to pay. Again, we only accept cash in exact change. We don't provide any change or a check. So you want to include at the bottom section, the first part is just mostly your information, how to contact you, where to send the results. And then the second part on the bottom, which is highlighted, is going to be where you actually write in which one of the tests that you want and how, much, um, how many of each of those you want done. So if you want four T1s, um, you would list those there and then put out the price. And that's how we figure out how much you owe us. This second sheet over here is a lot more important. This is how the ADSC um, uses the sample to get interpretations for what they're going to recommend for fertilizer for you. So we want to know what the crop is, when you sampled it, how old is the crop, which part of the plant did you take. So if you're supposed to take the leaves and you took the petioles or you took a piece of branch and submitted it, we would know that that's an incorrect, so they're not even going to bother doing it because it's the incorrect plant part. Um, you also, they also want to know if you uh, are including a soil sample, and again, this is to help make a more accurate recommendation. Okay, this next part down here is where you would type in or write in your um, sample numbers. So if you come up with your sample ID numbers, you can organize them here. And again, if your sample gets lost, they can match this list up with your actual samples so that they're able to kind of give you the results even if the samples get a little mixed up. This bottom part is more information about your actual farm. So they want to know what type of management techniques are you using? Um, do you have any disease problems, insect problems? What fertilizer are you utilizing? What is your soil type? If you have any recent soil data, if you've submitted it and you know what your soil levels are, um, it's important to put all that on there as well. And this will help them again with giving you some recommendations. Um, but you need to just be careful with those interpretations because again, it's 
it's only as good as the information that, they, that you give them, right? So you need to make sure that you can um, give them as much as possible so you can have accurate results and accurate recommendations. Okay, so most of this information for soil and tissue sampling comes from this book, which you don't need to necessarily buy. All of the chapters are available online for free. So this is an example of where I got most of the information for this presentation. And you can find it by going to the CTAR website, which is just ctar.hawaii.edu. And you just click on the top right corner where it says publications and videos, and it'll come up with this publication um, central that we have. And you type into the little search publication. This is where you can find information about everything, pretty much. But for this example, I just typed in tissue sample, very basic. And when you type that in, it's going to give you a readout. And this is how the readout looks for all of the different results that you put in whenever you search for anything, lychee, longan, um, mango. And it'll give you publications related to that topic. So down at the bottom, you can see the, where I found the publication. This is just sampling and analysis of soils and plant tissues. And then above it, I think chapter, I don't know, it says part 5 of 18, is the recommended plant tissue levels. And that's going to look like this. It's a long table. And basically what it gives you, it, it gives you the readout of the different nutrient levels in the tissue that you want to aim for. And that's how you interpret your results of if your levels are too high or too low. And it also tells you which part of the plant to sample. Um, so that's a good resource. It has a lot of the major fruits, vegetables, and ornamental crops there um, for you guys to use as a resource. And again, it's very easy to find online. It's free. Um, and if you have trouble getting to it, I'm sure Marisol can send you guys the links for that too. Sure. Yeah. So any questions about how to submit tissue samples? Is there a better time of the day to collect a sample? I prefer to go early in the morning when it's nice and cool, <laughs> but um, not, not particularly. Um, I think for any of the nitrogen or nitrates, it has to be refrigerated. So if you want to collect for nitrogen or nitrates, just make sure that you put it in the refrigerator. If you're not doing it for nitrogen or nitrates, um, again, it's just like with the soil, just get it here as quickly as possible um, because, again, it, the leaves are going to start uh, changing as you remove them. So if you take it in the morning and bring it here, get sent out the next day, then that's a good timing. Wait, what is yeah. the next day? How early? If you come on Tuesday, how early can you bring it? So Our offices it start accepting at 8, 8.30, yeah. So if you bring it that morning at 8, it goes off that day? Yes. Okay. Typically, yeah. On Tuesdays. On Tuesdays. Right. Right. On Tuesdays only, yeah.